The views expressed in this blog are hosted on my own website, are strictly personal and do not reflect the views of any organization. Hello and welcome friends once again to Straight Bat, my weekly video blog where as the title suggests, I comment with a straight bat. Happy Republic Day week, Namaskar. Now right through this week, a number of people have asked me a question. What is your view on the BBC documentary on the 2002 Gujarat violence? As someone who spent days, weeks, months, years tracking the violence and its aftermath, I honestly have been reluctant to give a typical soundbite, casual, throwaway opinion. Gujarat 2002 is a multi-layered story. The BBC documentary with its powerful archival footage only unpeels one part of that complex story, leaving much unspoken and unsaid. Which is also why any instant comment in a highly surcharged, polarized atmosphere is bound to invite only extreme responses on either side of the growing ideological and political divide. If, for example, I were to tell you today that I have checked and cross-checked over the years and found no evidence, repeat, no evidence till date of then Chief Minister Narendra Modi allegedly telling a gathering of top police officers on the 27th of February evening 2002 that the people who had called for a band the next day, the VHP, should be given a free run and I found no evidence of that, you might suggest that I am only towing the government line. If on the other hand, I tell you that on the 20th of February, I saw the police standing by while people were being killed, shops burned, property looted, particularly of the Muslim community in Ahmedabad with the VHP out in full force on the street, acting with total impunity, you might suggest that I am only amplifying the narrative of the anti sang Parivar, anti-Modi brigade. My friends, there are conflicting versions that you will be given. But there is only one truth I know and it is based on what my late grandfather PM Pant, Gujarat's longest serving police chief, told me once. No major riot Rajdeep takes place without the complicity or incompetence of the state machinery or both. Fact is, my friends, more than a thousand people died in the riots of 2002. Both Muslims and Hindus, over 700 of them were Muslims. Fact is, 59 Hindu car sevaks were killed in the Godhra train burning. Fact is, Gujarat was caught in a terrifying cycle of violence, of revenge killings. Fact is, the then state government and its police force couldn't stop this cycle of violence and in the first 24 hours after the Godhra train burning, certainly didn't seem to make enough of an effort to stop it. Fact is, the VHP was and is the most potent and well-organized force in Gujarat and enjoyed at the time huge influence amongst the ruling party. Fact is, far too few people were prosecuted and convicted for their role in the violence. Fact is, the violence divided and scarred urban Gujarat, scars that remain unhealed till today. Fact is, the violence made the BJP and Mr. Modi electorally unassailable. I can repeat all these facts ad nauseum. It won't make a difference because, well, I fear most of us have already chosen our sides. Maybe that's why I'm a little perplexed with the government's slightly over-the-top reaction to this BBC documentary. The documentary is neatly packaged, does make compelling viewing, but there is honestly little I didn't know about Gujarat 2002 that this documentary provides any real fresh insight into. Yes, there is a secret British Foreign Office report that it cites and reveals, but don't forget that this report too has little by way of fresh information. In fact, much of this report is based on what many journalists have already reported and said for years. It was information provided by journalists and police, policemen that are the basis for this foreign office report. And I will also say this, that many of us have done many more troubling case studies of the victims who suffered than even what this documentary provides. 
I guess it is because it is the BBC which is telling you the story that people have responded to it all these years later. Because whatever people might say or critics might say, the BBC is still seen as a credible news global brand. But here is my question, friends. Just because it is the BBC, did the Modi government need to get itself into a lather, into a frenzy by invoking emergency powers and blocking the documentary from YouTube and Twitter? By doing so, the government has only ended up drawing more attention to the documentary. I have friends from America, great supporters of Mr. Modi and the BJP, ringing me up now and asking for links to the documentary. Truth is, blocking and banning films and books is a sign of weakness, of a lack of self-confidence, of sending out the signal that the government of the day has something to hide. Would the government have been better off by either just ignoring this documentary or if it thought it was so or felt so strongly, then offer a point by point rebuttal to the BBC and the makers of the documentary. But by raising conspiracy theories, questioning the timing and suggesting that the documentary betrays a col colonial mindset only makes the government seem weak and thin skinned. Let me be honest. Targeting the BBC may earn plaudits in India by invoking nationalistic sentiment. But globally, it may not work. In fact, in a year when India is projecting itself as a Vishwa Guru and a leader of the G20 group of nations, when the government claims that India is the mother of all democracies, why get tangled up in censoring a documentary or by bizarrely cutting off electricity and the internet in JNU and sending the police into Jamia to stop the screening of the documentary by student groups? This is the era of optics. And the visual image of police entering a campus browbeating students over a documentary screening is far from ideal. The government has defended its actions claiming that airing a documentary like this could lead to law and order issues and is an affront to India's sovereignty. But is the mighty Indian state really so weak that one documentary that seeks to turn the spotlight on the ghosts of the past can undermine our sovereignty? Surely not. You see, and this, you see, my friends, and this is the ultimate truth. No one likes to be reminded of their past failings. Just as the Congress will always be haunted by the 1984 anti-Sikh pogrom, the BJP too will have to live with the scars of 2002, even though ironically, the BJP is undoubtedly the biggest beneficiary of the post of, of the 2002 violence electorally, and even today, any sharply polarized debate will only work in the BJP's favor. But beyond winning and losing elections, there are moral questions that are inescapable and must be confronted. I know also that there are many out there who will tell me, Look Rajdeep, we are in 2023. Stop living in 2002. Let's move on. Please bring closure. After all, hasn't the BJP won so many elections big time in Gujarat and nationally since 2002? Hasn't Mr. Modi been cleared by an SIT and by the Supreme Court? Isn't he India's number one neta? Isn't this a new generation, a new India and India that wants to move ahead and not look back? Sure, my friends, I am happy not to rewind the clock and to stop talking about 2002. You see, I didn't suffer personally during the Gujarat violence and neither perhaps did most of you. We didn't lose a mother, a sister, a brother, a father, a friend in Godhra or post Godhra. You and I can treat Gujarat as a closed chapter. Those who lost their near and dear ones and believe they never got justice will never get closure. When I saw a few months ago during the Gujarat election in Ahmedabad, one of the prime convicts in the Naroda Partia case in which more than 90 people were killed happily campaigning in the same area where the violence had occurred, I asked myself, is this justice? When I see the convicts in the Bilkis Banu rape and murder case being released and garlanded and being described by a BJP MLA Sanskari Brahmins, I ask myself, what happens to this lone woman's fight for justice? This isn't about perpetuating Muslim victimhood, but ensuring justice for all.
for all not just for 2002 but in every instance of mass communal violence in this country irrespective of which community suffers till there is justice and those responsible for violence are punished in a manner that befits the crime it is important to be reminded every now and then of the areas of darkness that are a blot on our collective conscience as Indians. That's perhaps the real relevance of this BBC documentary beyond the critique of its content. Remember always, those who cannot remember the past or choose to conveniently forget its harsh lessons are condemned to repeat it. By the way, and this is just as a postscript, I will say that it's good to see more and more films being made in this country that expose colonial excesses like the horror of General Dyer and Jallianwala Bagh. Just that I don't see anyone in Britain calling for a ban on films that expose the Raj and its colonial excesses. Think about it and have a happy Republic Day weekend. Do of course uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel for many more such videos. Stay well, stay safe. Jai Hind. Namaskar.